This video is about how to graph when it's not necessarily given in slope intercept form and also how to rewrite an equation so that it's in slope intercept form, although that's not always necessary in order to graph it. So this one here looks a little bit like standard form because the x and y are on the same side. If you remember, standard form is ax plus by equals c. Um, a, b, and c are integers, and a is a positive integer. So um, these aren't integers. These are obviously rational numbers, fractions. Um, so it looks a little bit like standard form. It's the nice thing about standard form when it's in this form is it's easy to get the x and y intercept. And once again, once you have the x and y intercept, those are two points. And when you have two points, you can easily graph a line. So kind of from this form, it's fairly easy to graph. Now, one of the things is if we wanted to write this in standard form or kind of move it in towards slope intercept form, really kind of a pain to have these denominators. So we're going to do a move that's called like fraction busting. And the way that you do fraction busting is you find the uh, LCD and uh, the least common denominator, in this case, the, the only denominator is four, and you multiply everything by the least common denominator. So in this case, as I said, it's four. So if you remember when you're solving equations or anything like that, you always multiply each side. So you're gonna multiply everything on this side by the denominator and everything by this side by the denominator. So what that looks like is I'm gonna use the distributive property I'm going to show all the steps, although there's obviously shortcuts. So 4 times x over 4 is 4x over 4. Distributing through 4 times uh, positive y is 4y over 4. And multiplying by 4 on the other side. And then you can see we have these fractions that are equal to 1, or these um, mighty ones. So that's equal to 1, that's equal to 1. So this is just x plus y is equal to 4. And now we do indeed have it in standard form, or that ax plus by equals 4, and they're all integers. Now, at this point, if I wanted to, if I wanted to find the x and y intercepts and just graph, to find the x intercept, the way that you do that is you set y is equal to 0. So I can use kind of a cover-up method to do that. So if I set y equal to 0, basically what happens is that x is just equal to 4. And if you look at this, this is actually a point. The point, so x and y, so x is 4, y is 0. So I, if I wanted to, I could just graph that, assuming that these are all counting by 1s. So x is 4, y is 0. So this is my x-intercept. Same thing if I wanted to find the y-intercept, I would set x equal to 0. I could do the same type of cover-up method here. So when x is 0, then I get y is equal to 4. And this again being a point, the point, oopsie, sorry, I wrote that wrong, didn't I? Um, so x is 0 y is 4, so that, that point there, that's my y-intercept. And once again, you can see two points is enough to make a line, although it's always good to do three, just make sure you haven't made any mistakes. Oops, you can't really see that. I'm going to do a little darker. Okay, so that's my line. If I want to, I can actually find the y um, sorry, the slope from here, I can one, once again, when I'm looking at a graph, the first thing I want to do is I want to note that it is a negative slope. And if I use kind of these little slope triangles, it doesn't matter where I go, I can just use this, in fact. And I went down four, and then I went over four, so that rise over run. So to find the slope is the change in y over the change in x, or some people say rise over run, and I went down four. So kind of rising negative 4 kind of doesn't quite make sense. And I, and the change in the x was 4. 
So my slope is negative one, which makes sense. That's a lot of information here, I got it. Now, if I wanted to then write in slope intercept form, I could continue to work with this equation and minus x from both sides to get y equals by itself. So I get y equals, and I'm going to use the commutative property to move those around, negative x plus 4. So this is it in slope-intercept form. Also, I have all the parts that I need here to also write it in slope-intercept form. So remember, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. I have my slope. It's a negative 1. I have my y-intercept. I calculated it here, which was 4. And once again, I could just also write this as y equals negative x plus 4. Woo! That was a lot of things, wasn't it? <laughs> so we're going to do another one. Um, so assuming we have time on YouTube because you can only do a 10-minute video. Okay. So I would recommend on this one that you hit the pause button. See if you can do some of the pieces yourself and then kind of watch the second piece. Okay, so fraction busting. So to fraction bust, I multiply everything by the LCD. In this case, the denominators are 2 and 5, so the least common denominator is 10. So once again, I can multiply each side by the least common denominator, multiply it to everything on the side, so I get 10x over 2 plus 10y over 5 equals, so multiplying by the other side, 30. Simplifying my fractions, 10 over 2 is 5x plus 2y equals 30. Now I have it in standard form. So that's awesome. So I've just kind of changed it from this wonky form to standard form. From standard form, I can find the y-intercepts and the x-intercepts. To find the x-intercept, that y is equal to 0. When y is equal to 0, 5 times what gives me 30? That would be x is 6. So that is the point 6, 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, oops, 6, 0. To find the y-intercept, set x equal to 0. When I set x equal to 0, I can use this cover-up method. So 2 times what gives me 30? That's y equals 15. <laughs> I did not scale. I have to rescale this in order for me to get this on here. Oh, well, maybe we won't grab this one. That, that's fine, because we're running out of time anyways. Um, so now I have this point, 0, 15. So once again, I have two points, so I can easily graph it from here. If I wanted to convert this into slope-intercept form, I could use this information to help me find the change in y over the change in x. Once again, you know the slope formula, so you have those two points. So slope is the change in y over the change in x. Or you can go y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I'm just going to make this my first point. So 15 minus 0 and 0 minus 6. Once again, that's a whole other video in and of itself. So I have 15 over negative 6. Simplifying the fraction, divide by 3, divide by 3, 5 over negative 2. So this is my slope, and then I can put it into y equals mx plus b form. 5 over negative 2, x plus, and my y-intercept is 15. Whew, that was a lot. <laughs> it is a practice thing. Once again, that was a lot of different questions answered in the course of one problem. So pretty rich there in terms of complexity.